Cooking up a feast in the van tonight Come dine with me and have a bite Right then, so now he's going to attempt to make Go on Chicken tikka Now This is my take on Looney's ten cheats guide to Dan Tandoori Chicken. If you go back through Mooney's videos from years ago, she did a cheats guide to Tandoori Chicken and she recommends using this stuff. I just like the fridge. Which is slightly tricky to get hold of. I I found a pot of this in a uh, uh, an oriental place up the side of the A1. However, armed with this, I went to my local Asian corner shop and said get me some of this stuff and they got about a case of it so personally I'm not going to have any trouble getting hold of this for a while but as recommended by Mooney this is the gear Patax Tandoori Spice Marinade armed with this you can do a fairly average approximation of chicken tikka or in her case Tandoori that should last you like chicken. like three four months Take, takes yeah so that's what we need we also need chicken breast and He's good, isn't he? In here. He's taking over my job. <laughs> in here, I've got a bit of chicken breast, so here we go. So what I'm going to do is cut this up. You can, in Tesco's at least, get um, diced chicken, which from my point of view is a bit too small, because I like my chicken tikka in reasonable chunks. I'm salivating while I'm telling you this, viewers, but there you go. So... I'm cutting it into reasonably chunky squares because that's how I personally like it. Scissors? Are you using scissors? I'm using scissors and my uh, probation officer says I'm not allowed sharp objects but okay. um, <laughs> this is what we're using. Is it easier to cut with scissors? I would say it is, yeah. Have you not tried it? No. Oh, well. Something I need to try out. Yeah, you need to try it. Oh, hello. So there we go. So we got decent chunks there, teacup sized chunks. Mm -hmm. So the next deal is I'm going to stick it in here. Yogurt goes in here. We don't measure anything in here, we just crank it in. That's always the sign of a good cook. <laughs> it's the sign of this cook. So you don't actually need a whole lot of this, as it happens, which is good because I haven't got a whole lot of it. But and a couple of spoons of the magic ingredient, the Patax Tandoori Spice Marinade. That'll probably do. And we mix it up. Now, once this has marinated and you get the um, chicken out, chances are there'll be enough marinade to crank a bit more in there and uh, repeat the process until you run out of chicken, basically. But So, stuff that in. Give it a good mix around. And the magic occurs over time. So this has got to go in the fridge and sit there and marinate for a, a little while. However, to save a bit of time, here's one I prepared earlier. He's been wanting to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea, viewers. I've been building up for this, this moment all afternoon. So here is what we cranked, well, what I cranked in earlier to marinate. And I've got some skewers, especially for the occasion. So I'm going to skewer it up, and then it'll go in my gas pad tandoor, otherwise known as the oven. Which you think Indian tandoors are pretty flipping hot. So yeah, they're mega I've hot. I've got mine on quite hot. So we'll skewer this up. So where's this tweak? This what? 
Where's the tweak in the recipe for <laughs> my one? <laughs> the tweak in the recipe is that I'm not using a chicken leg or a chicken quarter because I've tried it that way and I hate to say this, but I prefer it this way. Also, it's because you're an Englishman. <laughs> also, I don't viewers, know. <laughs> Mooney recommends that you should crank in a, to this mix here: um, lemon juice, um, lime, maybe a bit of um, garlic, garlic, ginger. Now, again, I've tried it like that, and of course, you've got to do a bit of extra shopping and whatnot. Frankly, I don't think it enhanced it. it particularly okay so as i am captain lazy um i'm doing it this way as you can see loads left loads over. left so if you've got a bit more chicken you can crank it in there and and, and keep going so fingers out of the way all right oh you can wash your hands yeah four more ponds <laughs> what i'm gonna do now is stick these two skewers in the oven and then um the magic will occur. How long does it take for it to cook? <laughs> I, from past experience, I reckon 10 minutes and I'll turn it over and wow. it's done. And it's looking like, it's looking like it should do um, after about 15 or 20 minutes. Okay. All right, we'll wait for that then. A little bit more juice on it. All right, Chris, I wanted to ask you about your hob. Okay, you've got two gas rings. Is that a gas ring underneath there? Yeah, we've got two gas rings. Um, what's that? That's an electric ring. Okay, now, so you can. Because I've been um, mugged for the uh, 2150 or 2250 or whatever it is, and Mooney only paid 10 quid, I'm on electric hookup. So when I turn this here, that light comes on. But not only does the light come on, that gets hot. That's which a good it, idea. Which it wouldn't do. Um, what a bloody brilliant <laughs> idea. <laughs> which it wouldn't do if I wasn't connected to the mains. Chris, show me just what you just showed me. Open it, okay, come well, on, open it. <laughs> in the same vein as uh, embarrassing myself further this evening, viewers, this um, this microwave that Ben and I have thoughtfully uh, built into the motorhome, which never flipping works for me because I'm never on hookup, apart from tonight, which is a miracle. Because um, I never use it as a microwave... Um, it's actually my snack. Uh, it's my snack department. <laughs> with um, yeah, some, uh, my, nibbles, my nibbles are in excellent, here. Excellent, excellent idea. To learn how to make chapatis, rotis. So I'm gonna have to talk him through this. So we've got the onion bhaji flour here. Yep. Which we're gonna uh, use to make the chapatis. Nice big bowl. <laughs> so. Just pour your flour in the bowl. How much flour do you reckon we need? I don't know. Um, you don't... How about put about two of those in? Yeah, put another one in. Two of them. Yeah, it'll be something oh, for you, you to do. You know what we do in. need? Remembering back to your video from several years ago, boiling water. You don't really need to. Don't worry about it. Uh, put some salt in there. <laughs> A pinch of salt. You honestly don't need to put boiling water in there. Right. Okay, give that a good old stir. Right, yeah. Stirry, stirry, stir. Yeah. Always mix your dry ingredients. You know that, don't you? Oh yes. Uh, and then slowly, gradually, add some water in this, and we're using your hands, kneading it until you get a dough. Done. Told you. That's how you make it. <laughs> what you did tell me in the previous video was use uh, flipping boiling water. Well, no, it is. It makes it fluffier. Okay, no, just knead it and see if there's enough. I don't think that's enough. Hang on. Let's have a look. Get your hands in right, there. Right, we're going in, viewers. We're going in. Right. Yeah. yeah, it's not enough, is it? A bit no. more water. You can always add, but you can't take away, can you? Well, you can always add more flour if you want. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I might need the flour for more onion bargies later. So. <laughs> Because I saw the, uh, you know, how keen you were to devour those onion barges. They don't want that bad. I wouldn't do it personally again. What right. do you think? Good. You're right. Now you really need to knead that for five minutes to get the gluten going in there. The gluten that gets activated when you put the boiling water in, yeah? Yeah. Okay. 
I can see this plan going horribly. Yeah, but most people don't put boiling horribly water Horribly belly in. up. No, they don't use boiling water when they're making the waters most of the time. You really need to get your hands in it's there. It's very sticky, is it? Yeah, carry on, sticky. carry on, mixing it, mixing okay. it. And then it will get to a stage where it just comes off the bowl. Yeah, it's Might coming off the bowl, but it's not coming off my fingers. That's, just, um, that's the worrying part at the moment. You're not, you're not needing it strong enough. Is that right? Yeah, you okay. need to like get your hands in, make make your hands into a fist, right, and then pummel it. Okay. That's it. Giving it a good pummel yeah. in now. And that will get the old uh, gluten fibres going. I reckon it's. I reckon it's too wet. Yeah, then you can add a little bit more flour if you want. Okay. There right. you go. Bit of the onion flour gone in there now. That's it. And then you just keep pouring. I'm not feeling that. as confident about this as I was earlier. <laughs> got a bad feeling about this. No, you just got to keep working that dough and it will get there. You reckon? Yeah. Keep working it. You're not doing it. You're not pummeling it. God, it's so hot standing next to your bloody cooker. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad it's hot. It's meant to be hot, isn't it? That's it. Just keep adding in more flour and you'll make it even tougher. Okay. <laughs> if this gets any views at all, I'm worried about your viewers. I'm going to put the title to <laughs> How Not to Make a Roti. <laughs> what, next to How Not to Make Onion Barges? Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> oh, you've got to keep kneading it. Five minutes. Right, so give that a good old kneading. That's it. Those of you that are more than five foot four won't have this problem. Maybe take it out of the bowl and knead it on the uh, actual work surface, like yeah, making on. bread. It's hard work, isn't it, making chapatis? Ain't easy. Yeah, well, just in case um, this wasn't an entire success. You had some pre-made ones. I've got some here from Patax, but yeah. we'll see how it goes. Hopefully we won't need That's to normally my little to, trick. Um, Patax finest. That's it, and now I need it like bread. Have you made bread before? No. Okay. Definitely not. Nah, nor why. <laughs> <laughs> but you have made your parties. Oh, yeah. That's it. Now it's all going to come together. There was light on the side. Okay, so this is Chris's main meal. He didn't have to do a star, he just had to do a main. But we've got chicken tikka, salad, and a chapati. Well, hey, right, let's taste it. Now we're gonna have the food and you know, nice table, plenty of room to sit and chill and relax. And let's try this chicken tikka. It's you've done it quite quickly, to be fair. Ish. Yeah. <laughs> Are you gonna tear that chapati in half? No, I thought I'd let you do that. No, you do that. Go on. I want the smaller end. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Give me the small bit. Right. Uh, right then. What do we think? It's not a competition, by the way, okay? I'm very grateful that you've cooked. Mmm. Well... What do you reckon? It's chicken. But it could do with a bit more tikka flavour, I think. Uh, over to the expert. It's dry. <laughs> <laughs> now then. I do appreciate honest comments. However, on this occasion... <laughs> Which is why you got some here, tomato ketchup. No. <laughs> what? I think, it's, I think it's in there. Oh, oh, I've lost it. What are you looking for? My Patax masala sauce okay. to add a bit of moisture to it. But you agree it's a bit dry? Uh, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, okay. All right, to, to make it less drier. The trick is to base it in oil. <gasps> Top tips, viewers. 
But otherwise, it's okay. It's edible. Oh. Hmm. It's not my finest hour, I have to say. <laughs> I feel mildly disappointed that my attempt at Indian cooking has slightly gone wider the mark. No, it's good. However. The flavour's there. It's quite nice seeing the sunset coming down over there. You can see it. And this is how much of the chicken tikka is actually remaining, which Chris is going to... Slightly more than I'd anticipated, as it happens. <laughs> I thought we'd have wolfed it down. <laughs> However, due to its uh, incredible dryness, it's um, destined to go in some curry sauce tomorrow, I think. Yeah, I think good plan. <laughs> <laughs>